Hello, welcome to module 4 of third week of our course. In the last lecture, we started discussion on modeling large molecular networks in cellular processes. For example, example cell signaling, cell cycle control, something like that. And if you remember, we discussed certain key issues there. First of all, these large network are made up of large number of molecular processes, which are many times very difficult to model. Then we discussed that there are something called network motif, a sub-network made up of multiple but few in number molecules and a handful of molecular processes, maybe two, three, four of them. So each of these network motif has a particular architecture as well as they have particular types of dynamical properties and functions. For example, we discussed about positive feedback, negative feedback, we discussed about incoherent feed forward. Then we said that these processes, these motifs can be broken down again into elementary processes. Each of the motif is actually made up of elementary processes like transcription, translation, ligand binding to receptor, enzymatic reaction in a single step or something like that. So at the base of a all the molecular processes, there are these elementary processes. So if I have to create a mathematical for model for a large molecular network in controlling certain bi biological process, I have to know how to write down the ordinary differential equations for each of these elementary processes. So that I can club them together to create a larger model. So in this lecture, we will start discussing about that. So before we jump into, you have to remember that there are certain particular key issues in this. So let us look into the key issues in mathematical formulation for elementary molecular processes. The first and foremost issue is that we'll use ordinary differential equation for our model. As you remember, ordinary differential equation will represent the, a differential there, a derivative will be there. So that will represent rate of change of concentration of molecules in this case. In many cases, it may be number change in rate of change in number of molecules, but usually it is concentration of molecules, usually in molar term. Secondly, this ordinary e differential equation will be often based on law of mass action that you have studied in school level and we have discussed earlier in the course also. Many a time, the equation may not be exactly following the law of mass action, but it may be inspired from law of mass action and similar to that because the processes may be not exactly same we were, uh, are like elementary reactions where law of mass action is valid, but we can get inspired from law of mass action and create an ordinary differential equation and I will discuss those issues in time. Another key issue that we have to remember is that many a time a process may have multiple steps. But we club them together because of two reasons. First, obviously, it reduces my mathematical problem. Secondly, many a time we are not sure about how many such processes are involved and what they are mechanistically. For example, if I talk of transcriptional control of, trans of a particular gene's expression. So a transcription factor comes and binds on the DNA and the promoter region. Then it triggers formation of a complex with other molecules. And then ultimately the polymerase comes and start transcribing the mRNA. Now surely, if you look at the from a mechanistic point of view, this is a multi-step process involving multiple molecules. But most of the time, we are not clear about how many such steps are involved and what all other molecules are there. You may know only the few key transcription factor and polymerase involved in the process. So I may club all these processes and consider a only one single ODE representing the rate of change of the mRNA concentration and represent the whole process of transcriptional control by that transcription factor by simple that ODE. So this type of reduction in the problem is done very frequently. And we have to keep that in mind. So let us start with these key issues in mind. Let us start creating ordinary differential equation based model for simple elementary processes. We will start with ligand binding. And it's a very common thing. It's very common to have cell surface on which you may have a receptor and a ligand like a growth factor comes and bind. So this receptor may be EGFR, EGF receptor and your ligand may be EGF. So a ligand binds to receptor and forms 
a receptor ligand complex LR. Remember this is a binding process, it is not actually a chemical reaction because there is no molecular bond, covalent bond formation or, or no covalent bond is broken here. Binding of a ligand with a receptor is through non-covalent interaction like hydrogen bonds, electrostatic interaction, something like that. So it is actually a process rather than a chemical reaction. And as it is not, does not involve any covalent bond formation, this process is reversible. So you will have ligand binding to the receptor forming the complex and in the next moment it will break down again to give rise to a free ligand and free receptor. So it is a reversible process the way I have shown here by double arrow and the rate constant for the forward one is suppose K1 and the backward reaction or the reverse reaction the rate constant is K2. So let us write down what will the forward rate. So using the law of mass action I can consider see remember the stoichiometry here is 1 and 1 forming one molecule of the complex. So using the rate of uh, law of mass action I can write forward rate is equal to k1 that is the rate constant into L into R that is the concentration because that is why I use square brackets and I will also advise you to use that and these concentrations are usually in molar unit and remember L and R these are free molecules. So these are concentration of free ligand and free receptor. Similarly using the same law of mass action I can write the reverse rate will be K2, K2 is the rate constant for the reverse reaction and again in square bracket LR is the concentration of the complex formed. So now these are forward and reverse rate, using this I can write down the ODE representing change in concentration of the complex LR. So that is DLR DT is equal to the first term, this is coming from this forward reaction that is K1 into L into R, this is how it is formed and minus the backward re reaction because reverse reaction because by this process this reverse reaction the concentration of the complex is decreasing that is why I have a minus sign here. So that is as I know is K2 into LR. Now what will be the differential equation for rate of change of free R? So that will be dr dt. So obviously the free r is getting reduced by the forward reaction that is why I have a minus sign here and that is minus k1 l into r plus k2 into lr because when lr is breaking down it is forming free r. So it is a positive sign here. So you can see these two are equal, equal except there is a multiplication by a negative sign actually. So this has become negative this has become positive. As the stoichiometry of this reaction I have shown here is 1 is to 1, one ligand is binding to one receptor. So the ODE for the ligand will be also exactly same as that of the receptor. So DLDT is representing the rate of change of concentration of free ligand and that will be same as that for the free receptor that is minus K1 LR because by forward reaction the free L is getting uh, used up plus K2 into LR the concentration of complex because by this reverse process free ligand is formed. So what I have done I have written down the OD three ODs for the free ligand and free receptor and also for the complex LR. So now let us look into certain particular issue which is typical of ligand uh, receptor binding. Let us look into the steady state of the system. So at steady state if you remember the rate of the process should become 0. So I can write DLR DT is equal to 0. So if DLR DT is 0 by the ordinary differential equation that is just I have written in the last slide I can write K1 L into R minus K2 LR should be equal to 0 because that is equal to DLR DT. So if this is equal to 0 I can rearrange these terms and I can write K1 LR is equal to K2 LR. This is the complex concentration of the complex. So now take out this constant term 
in one side and the variable term on the other side. So what I get? I get K1 by K2 is equal to LR by concentration of free ligand and concentration of free receptor. This ratio of K1 and K2 is called equilibrium constant in biological literature. Remember, I started by saying I am considering a steady state. I have not said equilibrium, but in literature, this steady state is actually called equilibrium. If you remember, we have discussed this issue earlier, and usually we try to avoid the use equilibrium because equilibrium broadly may mean thermodynamic equilibrium also, and that may sometimes be confusing, but in this case, they are same and equivalent. So, I have K equilibrium which is ratio of K1 and K2 and that is equal to LR that is the concentration of co complex divided by concentration of free receptor and free ligand. Now in biological biology literature this K equilibrium is actually is not discussed or measured. Usually biologists measure dissociation constant. And the affinity of a ligand is described in terms of dissociation constant. If you look into textbook, you will find the affinity of an antigen for, a, for an antibody for an antigen is discussed in terms of its dissociation constant. So what is a dissociation constant? Let us look into it. A dissociation constant KD is nothing but inverse of K equilibrium, 1 by K equilibrium. So if K equilibrium is K1 by K2, then KD will be K2 by K1. And as we know here, K equilibrium is ratio of complex of the complex form between receptor and ligand divided by concentration of free ligand and free receptor. Then KD is LR, L is the free ligand, R is the concentration of the free receptor divided by the concentration of the complex. So what we have discussed till now is how to write down the ODE for ligand, receptor and the complex form, a complex form by binding of the ligand and receptor. So suppose now I want to simulate this system numerically obviously ultimately you can use JSIM to simulate this one. So I have three ODEs, one representing the rate of change of free R, the other one representing rate of change of free L, the other one is for LR. And we are interested mostly in how much complex is formed in particular time point. So if I have to create a model, mathematical model for that, I will do some basic corrections here. For example, to reduce this system further, what I can do, I can assume that the total ligand and total receptor remain constant. For example, I will consider that total concentration of ligand is LT and total concentration of receptor is RT and they are all constant. And that's quite a valid assumption because when you do a antigen and antibody binding assay, actually you have a fixed amount of antigen which is allowed to bind with a fixed amount of antibodies. So, so the total amount of antigen and the total anti, uh, concent, uh, concentration of antibody is fixed. When you have a cells growing in a plate and you give suppose insulin from outside and insulin will go and bind to the insulin receptor present on cells. So for a short duration of time you can easily consider that the total number of receptor and the total amount of insulin given remain constant. But you have to remember with time concentration of insulin will also get degraded because it is degrading. Receptors will also get, also get processed and degraded, so number of receptors will also change. But for a short period of time, I can consider the number of total ligand molecules and the number of total receptor molecules remain same, so their concentration, total concentration or is always constant for that period of time. So if I have assumed that these two things are constant, then I can represent free R and free L in terms of these equations, math, algebraic equation given here. So concentration of free L will be equal to nothing but total concentration of the ligand minus the concentration of the complex because that complex has sequestered a some amount of ligand. So concentration of the complex should be deducted from the total concentration of the lig ligand. That will give me free con concentration of free ligand. Similarly, concentration of free receptor should be equal to 
concentration of the total receptor all receptor minus concentration of the complex because that complex also have receptor in it so once you have these conservation rules then what i can do see here in this case l can be re replaced by this thing lt minus lr lt is a constant so i don't require a differential equation for lt r which is for which you have a differential equation here as dr dt r can be replaced by rt minus lr again rt is constant so i don't require a ordinary differential equation for rt so i am left with one dependent variable that is lr that is the concentration of ligand that means i don't require these ordinary differential equation representing the rate of change of reset free receptor i don't require the ordinary differential equation for l because i have considered l in terms of a constant that is lt and lr what i require is only the ordinary differential equation for lr because at any moment if i can calculate the amount of lr then i can easily calculate amount of free ligand and free receptor by these two algebraic relationship so from 3 od i have reduced to only 1 od so let us see how far i can change this only 1 od that i have to deal with so i have left with only 1 od that is representing the rate of change in concentration of the complex lr so dlr dt is equal to k into l into r minus k2 lr now l is free ligand r is also free receptor so if i use this algebraic relation i can replace this l and r by these algebraic relations that's what i have done so the equation after replacement of free l and r will be k1 into lt minus lr this is nothing but free r concentration into rt minus lr this is nothing but concentration of the free r minus k2 lr as it is so what i have done i have started with 3 od i have assumed a conservation of both receptor and ligand that helped me to reduce number of ods from 3 to 1 which is a non redundant od so now i want to simulate it and i will discuss now the code of simulating this in jsim and i will advise you to try this in jsim yourself and you can follow the code exactly here so the code is giving here if you remember it should start with a tag math so it is a math receptor model you can put any other name there in place of receptor model and you have to decide the initial time point that is zero maximum time point i have taken 3600 because i am considering the time scale may be in seconds so 3600 is 16 into 60 so there is one hour then i have only one od so i have only one dependent variable that is lr concentration of free uh, com, sorry concentration of the complex form between l and r and that is a dependent variable on t that's why lr in bracket t then you have to define the parameters So the first parameter is k1 that is the forward rate constant it is 10 to the power 4 and i have annotated it saying that the unit is 1 by molar per second 1 by molar second the second parameter is k2 that is i have taken as 10 to the power minus 5 it is unit is actually 1 by second remember these units are written in annotation that means jsim will not consider this unit so the whole calculation is based on consideration that everything is unitless but i have written them in annotation so that we can remember what is the unit we are using so if you look into it the kd in this particular ligand receptor case is nothing but k2 by k1 it is nothing but 10 to the power minus 5 by 10 to the power 4 so this is 10 to the power minus 9 molar so in nanomolar affinity for ligand and receptor i have considered i have considered micromolar concentration for ligand and receptor both so lt is the total amount of ligand remember we are assuming the total amount of ligand remain constant so that's why lt ligand total 
is equal to 10 to the power minus 6. In annotation, I have written down that it is molar unit. So it is actually micromolar, 10 to the power minus 6. Whereas RT is a total concentration of receptor. So that also I have considered 10 to the power minus 6 molar. Unit is written in annotation. Unit will not be considered during calculation. The initial value for LR is obviously 0 because at the time equal to 0, there is no complex formation. So LR is equal to 0. Then comes writing the OD following the equation that we discussed just now in the last slide. LR colon T which means essentially DLR DT is equal to, so this is nothing but DLR DT is equal to K1 LT minus LR. So this is nothing but free L into RT minus LR that is nothing but free R minus K2 into LR. So this is the reverse, last part is the reverse reaction. So that's all. So just one OD and I have all these parameters K1 and K2 and LT and uh, RT these are the constant term and I can I am ready to simulate. So I will advise to write down this code in JSIM and simulate it. I have already simulated it and you can see the result here. So here what I have plotted, I have plotted time, I have written in second scale and obviously on the vertical axis you have the concentration of LR, the complex in molar unit. As you can see with increase in time it reaches, slowly increases so sharply and then reaches a saturation. This is a typical ligand receptor binding curve that you get repeatedly in most of the ligand receptor system and interestingly you can see here by much before one hour that is 3600 second actually the system has reached the steady state or equilibrium. So suppose you are doing an experiment using real experiment using antigen antibody interaction involving the affinity of nanomolar then actually the reaction is over, the complex formation is over, the steady state is reached by one hour and you can then further process the experiment. I can also plot the concentration of free ligand like this because free ligand is nothing, concentration of free ligand is nothing but L total minus LR. So what I can do in case of JSIM simulation JSIM will give me the LR concentration, that's what plotted here. So I can plot L as free L is nothing but LT, that is the total concentration which I have kept constant minus LR, right? That is the concentration of the complex. So I have taken LT as 10 to the power minus 6 minus LR at any time point. So you can plot that and if you plot L versus time, L versus time, you will see just reverse of this complex plot, I will get a something similar to like this. You can try this one. So what I have discussed till now is actually binding of a ligand to a receptor. For example, insulin going and binding to insulin receptor or suppose EGF going to bind to EGF or something like that. But many a time actually receptor can have two hands. So I, my receptor will be called bivalent, for example an antibody. If you remember, the antibody is a Y-shaped molecule. So you have identical two hands in an antibody and the same antigen, one antigen molecule can bind here and another mo molecule can bind here. So the two ligands can bind to one receptor. You can have opposite where the ligand has two hands and it goes and bind to a one receptor and another receptor side by side. So this type of complex situation, complicated situation can arise. So let us look one example where I have monovalent ligand but the receptor is bivalent. So what we are doing here is actually I have this type of thing where one ligand can bind here, other ligand can bind here. So these circles are ligand, R is the Y shaped thing is the receptor. So I can break down this whole process into two steps. One, ligand bind to receptor to form ligand receptor complex. So this can be like this ligand is bound here or it can be like this, two configura configuration are possible, right? So both of them are actually LR, both of them are complex where there is only one molecule of ligand and one molecule of receptor. Then once they are formed, then the second ligand can come and give rise to the final complex where both the hands 
of the receptor are catching the binding the ligand. So that is L binding to LR to give rise to LRL. All these binding processes are non-covalent interactions, so the all are reversible. That's what I have shown here and here. And what I have done here to first simplify the process, I have considered that the forward rate constant for this reaction, that is the first ligand binding, is K1, and it is same for the second ligand binding also. K, here also K1. So similarly, I have simplified the whole thing by considering that LR the reverse rate constant from LR to L and R is K2 and the same rate constant is there for dissociation of LRL. So this K2, this K2, this K1, this K1 are same. So this uh, in reality they may be different but for simplification and discussion here in the class I have considered them as same thing. So now if I have to make write down the ODs what I will do. So obviously I can write a ODE for L, I can write down a ODE for R, I should write down a ODE for LR, that is one ligand, one receptor complex, and also I have to write down an ODE for LRL, the final complex. So five ODEs should, sorry, four ODEs should be there. Now if you remember in the last example, I have considered conservation of L total ligand and total receptor. Similar conservation can be assumed here and therefore we are left with only one variable LR and the other uh, dependent variable LRL. So let us look into the ordinary differential equation that will represent rate of change of con concentration of LR, the first complex, where one ligand is bound to one receptor. That is given here. That would be equal to the rate of formation of this complex that is K1 into L into R, L is concentration of free ligand, R is concentration of free receptor and it is multiplied with K, K1. Now see I have multiplied this whole thing with K2 because as you have seen here ligand can come and bind here also give a product and it can bind to the other arm also. Both of them are actually nothing but LR for us mathematically. So that means two processes can give rise to LR. So that means I have a double the rate. So I have 2 into K1 into LR minus K2 LR. Minus K2 LR is representing the reversal of breaking down of LR to L and R. So that's why the minus sign is there. Now remember. LR is also getting used up in formation of the second complex where right? another ligand come and binds. So that rate is represented by K1 L that is the concentration of free ligand into concentration of the first complex LR. So this process, this process is actually using up LR that is why I have a minus sign here plus this LRL is breaking down. Now LRL is nothing but like this. Now it can break down where this one will break first or it can also break down from here. So I have two processes by which I can get back LR from LRL. That is why I have 2 here. So it will be 2 into K2 into LRL that is the concentration of the second and final complex. Now look into the ODE for the second complex DLRL DT which is equal to K1 L into LR that is the forward rate this one by which the LRL is formed minus again 2 into K2 into LRL as I explained just now 2 is given because I have two arms both are occupied by the ligand first this ligand can break and also at the same time in another molecule this ligand can break. So there are two paths by which I can get back, back to one ligand state. So that is why I have two here. So this example shows that when you are writing down the ODEs, you have to be very careful about stoichiometry. At the same time you have to look for all the processes involved here. Although these graphical representations show both reverse and forward processes, it is not clear directly from this diagram that the complex can be formed, LR complex can be formed by two way 
as well as LRL can be broken down in two ways. That you have to imagine and incorporate into your ODE. So if I have written down this ODE, and if I assume that total amount of ligand and total amount of receptor remain constant, so I can have some conservation rules that algebraically represented here. That is, total amount of receptor in the system is equal to free R con uh, concentration, there is a concentration of free receptor, plus concentration of free ligand, plus concentration of the second complex, that is LRL. So, I can represent this R here by this relationship. So, I don't require a separate OD for R, because R will be equal to RT minus this whole thing. Similarly, I am considering total ligand LT is equal to constant, which is nothing but summation of free ligand plus LR, that is the first complex because it has one copy of the ligand, plus 2 into LRL. Remember, LRL is the final complex where two ligands are bound. That means one complex molecule will have two ligand. So the total concentration of ligand consumed by this is nothing but 2 into concentration of this complex, that is 2 into LRL. So that is the conservation rule. So I can replace this L and anywhere else using L will be equal to, concentration of L will be equal to nothing but L of T minus LR minus 2 into LRL. So I don't require a separate OD for L. So I have only OD for LR and LRL. These two are the dependent variable in my system. All other things are represented in terms of these two dependent variables. And now I can again use JSIM to simulate it considering certain numerical value for K1, K2 and the RT and LT. Till now what I have discussed the, about uh, only about the ligand receptor interaction and obviously this is an elementary process that we have discussed earlier. Another elementary process is, uh, process is formation of a molecule and breakdown of a molecule. If you remember, all these molecular processes are actually nothing but molecules interacting with each other involved in reactions and physical processes. So molecules must be produced. And at the same time, if a molecule is produced, after some time it will also get degraded, destroyed. So production of molecules and their degradation are elementary processes. Protein will be produced by translation and protein will be degraded. mRNA will be produced by transcription and mRNA will get degraded. Lipids will be produced by metabolic pathways and eventually each lipid will be broken down. So production and degradation are basic elementary process says that happens in most of the large network that we will deal with. Now how should we write down an ODE representing production of a molecule or breakdown of a molecule or degradation of a molecule? Remember production of a molecule can be a very complicated process. For example, I have discussed few minutes back about production of uh, so the production or uh, transcription of a molecule. So, in a transcription of a mRNA in, is a multiple steps are involved there. For example, few transcription factor has to come first bind to the promoter, then a co large complex is formed, that complex incorporate the polymerase, then the polymerase starts transcribing. So, a transcription is a multi-step process, translation is a multi-step process and if you remember, we sometimes club them down into one single step and write a simple OD for that. So it is many a time advantageous that we don't look into each of these mechanistic complexity and reduce the whole process into a simple one step process. So that type of as thing I will try to discuss today for production and degradation. Although the production of the molecule whether it is a protein or a lipid or a mRNA or DNA is multi step, I will consider them as a single step simple process for both degradation and production. Remember, we can do this assumption and for make this simplification as long as there is no compulsion on us that we have to assume a mechanistic complicated process here. There will be cases where we have to explicitly understand how transcription is controlled by a transcription factor. For modeling those processes, we may have to write a complicated OD. But for other, we will always try to write down a simplest OD possible. So let us look into the simplest one.
constitutive production of a molecule, say for a protein. By constitutive production, we mean the cell is producing that molecule without any external cue or without any in external induction. So it is continuously produced. So there are certain molecules which are con constitutively produced in cell because they are required continuously. For example, enzymes involved in your glucose metabolism. As long as the cell has to survive, it has to metabolize sugar. So those enzymes required for the sugar metabolism have to be in a high concentration in the cell, so they are produced almost constitutively continuously. So that's what I have shown, that X is produced and there is nothing. It, is, it may be coming from a transcription translation, that's why I have not written anything here. Nothing is here. So X is produced. So what can be the simplest OD representing this rate of change of X, con concentration of X, in this case? The simplest can be like this. Dx dt, that is the rate of change of concentration of X, is equal to a particular rate constant, Ks, K synthesis. As I said, I can as, uh, put a complicated OD here, representing the mechanistic details of the mechanism by which X is produced. But as long as I do not have compulsion to do that, I will try to put this type of, use this type of simplest ODs. Now, suppose the production of X is not constitutive, but a signal S come and tell the cell that you have to produce X. So it is an inducing thing. For example, you may be growing bacteria having a plasmid carrying a gene of interest under the control of lac operon. You may add IPTG from outside to induce the lac operon for production of that gene, the, the gene product. So in this case, IPTG is the signal given to bacteria that it has to produce that gene product. So I have represented graphically here, S is the signal that comes and it tells the cell to produce X. So what again be the simplest way to representing the dynamics here? It will be dx dt, that is the rate of change of x concentration is equal to ks into s because when s is equal to 0, there is no production. So it is just simple multiplication of ks, that is the rate constant for synthesis, into s, that is the signal intensity. That signal intensity can be in nanomolar molar term or in other unit accordingly that you have to change the unit of Ks also. If a molecule is produced, it will get degraded, that's obvious. So again degradation can be controlled by many mechanisms. For example, protein degradation are many a time controlled by complicated mechanism. But we will not consider that for here and unless until we have a compulsion to consider it, it's always wiser to consider a simple degradation. Just the way I have shown here, X is getting degraded. And the simplest OD I can think of using the law of mass action is a first order OD where dx dt will be equal to minus kd into x. kd is the rate constant for degradation, x is the concentration of the molecule present at time and minus sign I have given because by this degradation the concentration of x is decreasing. So that is why you have minus sign here that you have to be very particular about. Now degradation can be also induced, sometime a signal generated within the cell or from outside can go and tell the cell that you have to degrade a particular molecule. So in that case what type of OD I will write? Taking the cue from the uh, induced production I can write in this case for induced degradation dx dt is equal to minus kd s into x. So kd is the rate constant for degradation, S is the signal for degra degradation, X is the, in the square bracket, is the concentration of X free uh, at that time. So minus sign has been given again because by this process the concentration of X is decreasing. Now note that when S is equal to 0, when S equal to 0, this rate will be 0. Obviously because you have assumed that S is inducing the degradation of X in absence of S, there is no degradation of X. So now let us club this degradation and production together. So suppose I have a small process where X is induced, uh, production of X is induced by signal S and it gets constitutively degraded. So what will be my OD for X? So combining this equation and this equation, I can write dx dt is equal to 
k s into s this is the production term minus k d into x that is the degradation term. So let us now jot down what we have discussed in this module. We have discussed that we want to create ODE based ODEs for elementary processes that will represent rate of change of concentration of molecules involved in these elementary processes. Many of these ODEs will be based on law of mass action. Many a cases actually they are not elementary reaction but still we get inspired by law of mass action and try to use similar type of equations. Another interesting and crucial issue that we have to keep in mind that many a time multiple steps are involved in the process but we club them together and we consider them as a single step. Now one thing I will always advise to you is that try to keep the ordinary differential equation that you write to represent a process as simple as possible. Make assumptions, look into literature, discuss with the biologist who is doing the experiment to know what is the bare minimum thing that I have to include and try to discard the other. Unless until you have a requirement to make it complicated, do not write a complicated ODE. So it is better to keep ODEs as simple as possible. Whenever possible, we will try to use conservation rule. The way we have, did in, we have done in case of ligand receptor. I have considered total amount of ligand and total amount of receptor as constant throughout the process. And in many cases, in other biological processes also, you can assume this type of conservation where the total amount of particular type of molecule does not change with time. So if you can consider conservation, number of ordinary differential equation in your model will reduce. So reduce number of variable by considering conservation. We have discussed ligand receptor binding um, system and we have written down ODE using law of mass action. We have tried to reduce the number of ODEs there and ultimately I have discussed about the JSON model for this particular system. Please try to simulate that using JSON, using the code. If you require, you can change the parameter value or the model code. One important thing that we discussed while discussing about a bivalent receptor and that everybody should keep in mind is that many a time the graphical representation hides the stoichiometry or the multiple way a particular process happens. So when you are writing down the ODE, Keep in mind the stoichiometries involved in these processes, stoichiometry of the molecules involved in the processes and the number of processes which are there and giving rise to or removing a particular molecule. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.